Hello, my name is Matt Kelvert and this is Meg McDonald and we're representing promotions for Glasgow in 2024, the Worldcon bid. And we have the honor of being here with the uh, 2020 Hugo Award Best Fan Artist nominee, Ian Clark. Welcome, Hello. Ian. Pleased to be here. And we're, we're here um, to talk about the, the piece that's behind you, um, Shipbuilding Over the Clyde which we are very happy to be launching as one of our promotions for Glasgow in 2024. And I guess just to start out this interview, I um, wanted to ask what brought you uh, to fandom and fan art? I can't remember a time when I wasn't doing fan art, I think is the simple answer. I, I grew up in the 1970s reading science fiction, fantasy novels, Doctor Who target novels, one of my earliest career aspirations was to be the cover artist for the Doctor Who novelizations that I was reading because I greatly admired the artists, Chris Achilleos and Andrew Skelter, who used to do those. And I, I don't think I appreciated at the time quite what a limited job market there was for people to do the covers of Doctor Who books, but it was definitely one of the things that made me interested in art and, and wanting to do art. And then I've kind of just continued ever since, really. I'm still very involved in fandom at the moment. I, I like Doctor Who, particularly Star Trek, The Expanse, and I do a lot of fan art for those. Not to mention the countless artworks you did for Dublin in 2019 also. Lots of yeah, so, and that's, that's something that I was doing since about 2016, I think, mm -hmm. um, pretty much solidly all the way through from when it was a fledgling bid right the way through to um, attending the actual event. And that was a, that was a fantastic experience. Yeah. It was cool seeing it on the program Souvenir and the, the green woman was, I thought was my favorite personally. That's yes. very striking with the eyes. It was amazing attending the convention because I, I, I know that I'm fairly small fry in the grand scheme of things, but when you attend an event which is using your artwork fairly full cent, front and center and there, it's all there on the Souvenir Guide, and posters and postcards and up on the big screen sometimes. It, it does briefly make you feel like a celebrity. Uh, <laughs> and then you go back to your normal life afterwards and yeah. I never leave this room the rest of the time. So. Well, I think it's probably fair maybe to add to your celebrity status that um, we share with you some of the reactions we've had while showing our team shipbuilding over the cloud. So we've, we've shown it to our promotions team and to our bid committee. Um, it's very super secret um, until this, this goes live. Um, and there was just generally responses of dead silence. And you know, quite a few people, um, myself and a few others who lived in shipbuilding areas felt kind of filled up at that sort of real, I'm, you know, I was in Newcastle when Swan Hartners closed and sort of Clyde workers up here. And it was that real powerful feeling coming through the art. And they were just like, where can we get this? <laughs> it's, ours. it's Glasgow. And they were like, yes. So I think that, that I think you should be um, really very aware that this has had such a strong response and, and we think we'll have quite a strong response when everybody gets to see it. Um, that's lovely. Uh, that's lovely. Obviously in, as an artist you do tend to work very much in isolation and for the Dublin bid and the Glasgow bid I've, I've more or less had a free hand to choose what I was going to illustrate and so there hasn't necessarily been an expectation of what it was I was going to produce but um, it, it's fantastic that it's had such a, a lovely reception. Mm. Well, can you tell us a little bit about the piece then? Because obviously we've got our very strong responses to it and we, you know, Matt and I have gone through it and said, do you think this is this? Do you think, and we'll come to that. But like, tell us a bit about the piece and what inspired you in there. Yeah, so I mean, I'm not from Scotland, as you may have noticed, although I, I gather from my parents that I am about an eighth Scottish, like most of the world, I think I like to claim <laughs> Scottish heritage. Um, and so I, I, I had a brainstorm with Esther McCallum Stewart, the uh, chair of the Glasgow bid, just things that relate to Scotland, ideas that relate to Scotland. But one of the things that comes through very strongly for Glasgow particularly is its industrial heritage. Um, and that was such a major part of it through the Victorian era and right through the, the 20th century. And so uh, I was very keen to reflect that somehow. Um, and Esther and I also share a great love of the old classic rail posters. 
Mm. Uh, and I did one for Dublin, which you can see over my other shoulder here. Um, uh, Dublin by land, sea and air. And uh, although I wouldn't necessarily put myself in the same class as the artists who did those fantastic pieces of artwork, they're, they're so evocative. Um, and there was a particular one called Shipbuilding on the Clyde, um, which already existed by an artist called Norman Wilkinson um, from 1950s, I think. Um, and that was such a moody and atmospheric piece. And it obviously reflected the time when the shipyards were in full operation. And I thought if I could give that a science fictional spin, if I could produce almost a sister piece to that artwork, but but with very much of a, a spacecraft and, and maybe a sense of coming full circle, because a lot of the shipbuilding yards have obviously fallen into decline now. Um, but the space that they used to occupy is partly one is one of the spaces that the, the Glasgow uh, Worldcon will be occupying in the um, the Armadillo building. And so it seemed very appropriate to try and kind of bring that full circle and, and, and give a sense of the renewal of, of that shipbuilding industry, maybe coming back in the future, building spacecraft instead of uh, ship uh, seagoing ships. One of the pieces that catch both uh, Matt and I's eye in it is the small puffer ship in the front of the piece. Why did you include that? What was the, you know, everything else is very futuristic. One of the simplest answers is there is a little tug in the in the image that inspired me. And although I didn't copy any actual parts of that image directly, that I, I thought that was a nice touch. But particularly, I think you need a sense of scale in this kind of image. And so, and the, the scale is so big that a human figure will just disappear. Um, and it gives a real kind of sense of human scale. You get a sense of how big everything is. But also, again, it kind of roots it back in in the, where the the shipbuilding has come from and those tugs were, were, were very all pervasive. Um, I used a particular image of, of one that, that was uh, built in Aberdeen called the RFA Empire Fred, if anyone cares. Um, and it's, a, it's just a lovely evocative image with the smoke coming out of the funnel and it kind of ties it back to the Victorian steam powered era. Mm -hmm. um, and that's a nice juxtaposition, I think, with something that's sort of sitting in the background defying gravity. <laughs> yeah. what, um, what type of spaceship is being built in the image? Well, I, I, I was always really inspired by all of those really weird science fiction covers from the 1970s that mm. people like Chris Foss used to produce. I used to have one of those big hardback books, just page after page of these almost slightly so weird, you didn't know what to make of them, kind of these vast confabulations of just metal hanging in space or in front of alien landscapes. And I, I quite liked the slight abstract lumping together of shapes that those spacecraft had but I also wanted something that was recognizably sort of metal hulled and like a ship from that would have been built in the in the shipyard so I tried to sort of mash those two things together and produce something quite metallic quite geometric slightly abstract but full of girders and, and rivets and, and something that felt like a working vessel in my mind I guess it's it's like a, a freighter or, or a space tug or something along those lines but some, something that kind of again has a real nod to the kind of the, the history of the, the shipyards um, and I, I, I kind of wanted something particularly with a few bits of girder that tied itself into its environment it didn't just look like it had literally come from another planet. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's really really striking and I suppose if you're saying like maybe a space tug with the with the smaller tug in the front um, part of it did you name your spaceship in the background? I did not name my spaceship, no. We should have a competition. <laughs> you know, great. That might happen. Yeah. <laughs> With ideas. What's your favourite bit of the piece? It is probably the tug, if I'm honest. I think I think it, it came out very well. And as an artist, you kind of never know how things are going to turn out. And sometimes they exceed your expectations and sometimes they don't. And, and I think that's, I quite like that, the, the, the sort of little almost illuminated little ray of sunshine it appears to have on it and the water around it and things. I'm also quite fond of the of the squat little crane in the foreground because again I was I was keen to put things in front of the spacecraft because it gives this a sense of scale because it, mm -hmm. it shows it must be huge if that's in the foreground. Uh, I quite like this as well. Just with the the tug there is a Parahandi tales um, where there is a boatman on the Clyde and, and they're they're very funny stories but the tugboat was called the Vital Spark and there is a um like cast monument of it uh sculpture of it outside of the Kelvin Grove Museum so it's kind of apt that that it still stays in any form of art 
that that is still sort of a rooting point for Glasgow um, and for narrative. Vital Spark would be a fantastic spacecraft name. I, I thought think. so. <laughs> Especially if it's the, what was it, the Empire Thread? Yes. Yeah, mm. Empire Thread and the Vital Spark. I think there's something there. Do well together. What inspired the colour palette or scheme? Partly, I, I, one of the things that I really liked about the, the original um, rail posters is that some of them are very daylight, sunny, bright greens and things, but a lot of them are very moody and particularly some of the ones from Scotland actually are really, there's a lot of silhouettes and glowing skies and the ship building on the Clyde image is, has got a very moody colour scheme and I, I kind of like that that dusk, that crepuscular quality of not being too garish. I'm, I'm quite drawn to bright colours I have to say and I do like some bright colours and, and it's kind of a reds and orange and yellows and purples and, and those could be potentially quite garish but I, I tried to do them in a sort of muted way where the sun's fading and everything's just got that slight smokiness that slight magic time quality of, of, of dusk and it, again to me it has a slightly more more melancholy quality which i think i quite like around the shipyard yeah i think that captures glasgow obviously i'm not from there myself but the, the couple of times i've visited you do it, it's a it's a beautiful city but there are melancholy aspects to it and the duskiness also I think that's a great description of Glasgow itself. Uh, Meg, you can add a bit yeah. more being from Glasgow. No, it's, I mean, I think it's it's one of those things that they talk about um, Glasgow light um, because mm. it does it does rain a lot here. We are the bigger <laughs> green place, but we're green because it rains a lot. Um, but it provides, when, when those storm clouds clear, you get this really phenomenal sets of light and what it does to the buildings and kind of to the water. And, and you know, there's a lot with the Kelvin and the Clyde um, and the cart just outside Glasgow that you've got these kind of real waterway senses and, um, and the big Caledonian, the canal um, as well. So uh, it's, and it's quite funny, um, I was walking the canal recently and there is a mural over it which says, or futures. And I was thinking how apt that was as well as being, you know, a world con for our futures that very much within Glasgow, these parts of our history are also our future. Um, and it, it seems so nice in that image um, to kind of see that. And, and I, you know, as you say, the shipyards are falling in to disrepair and some areas have been rebuilt and revitalized. And obviously there's the amazing transport museum that's um, on, the, on the Clyde in the old shipyard spaces. And there's um, a small distillery and then there's the Armadillo SEC center and then you're into the city center. But kind of the further you go out in the South Bank, you still get that sort of melancholy hauntedness coming out of them. And it, it definitely in the, in the far corners of that picture, it feels like that kind of there. I drew, I drew quite heavily on a couple of images of John Brown's shipyard on Clyde Bank for some of the, the cranes and the buildings. Uh, there's one of the uh, Queen Mary and one of the QE2 um, in dock and being built there. And, and I, I wanted to get a, a sense of place because I'm not familiar with the, the place and obviously they don't exist to some extent. So I wanted to try and, and create something that was fairly rooted in, in real places and, and the real history rather than being just fairly generic. Have you ever been to, to Glasgow yet yourself? I've been to Glasgow precisely once for a Star Trek convention in 1987. Whether that's the best way to visit Glasgow, I'm not sure, but it's certainly a relevant thematic way to visit Glasgow. It is, and I would say everybody should visit Glasgow for a convention, um, mm. obviously, but um, <laughs> you should definitely come back before, um, before 2024. We also have a wonderful TARDIS trail through Glasgow, oh, where there are awesome. several kind of TARDIS box, so, you know, appealing to your interests. <laughs> they, they jump up out of nowhere. Yeah. What do you think next as images for Glasgow? I'm, I'm quite keen to do some of the more mythological things. It's, it's always a balancing act with the world, Tom, because obviously it's got a very strong science fictional slant, but then it's also got horror and fantasy and mythology. And I did for the Dublin bit, I did a lot of, of images around Selkies mm -hmm. um, and uh, she and, and various kind of mythological creatures and I'm, I'm quite interested to do something a bit 
a bit more organic and moody to contrast with some of the sort of hard metal industrial things because I think that's there's obviously a very strong mythological heritage to Glasgow as there is to Dublin uh, and to Ireland in general and so I would like to do something around that next I think. Oh, I'm very excited about that. Very excited. I'm just going to say right now, I get first dibs, not us. <laughs> Teasing us. Um, so, thank you so much. So, it's it's fair to say that basically, if you support um, Glasgow in 2024 during um, Con Zealand, we will be making some limited edition postcards of shipbuilding over the clouds and we will be sending them out to you in confirmation of your support and we're also going to be making some zoom backgrounds of it and all of our supporters will have access to that so you can be evocatively placed within the image and, and kind of see how how it shapes your perspectives as well thank you so much ian um, for your art and for this chat yeah. you're welcome you. i'm very very flattered that it's been so well received <laughs> Best of luck with the Hugo nomination also. Oh, thank you very much. Fingers crossed. <laughs>